What you see is probably the most important smartphone Tecno has made since the Phantom 6 Plus. Tecno's all grown up. This is the Camon 18 Premier and it has a mature sophistication about it, which, dare I say, warrants the cheeky jab Tecno took at Samsung. This is the Tecno Camon 18 Premier and it's as exciting as the Premier. Quite an exquisite design now, isn't it? It has a clean aesthetic with clean lines and yes, it has a strong resemblance to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, but that does not take away from the fact that it is a stunning looking smartphone. It feels as spectacular as well. The frosted glass gives it a nice satin feel to it. All the buttons are on the right edge of the smartphone with the fingerprint scanner baked into the power button. The top edge has a tiny hole for the secondary microphone and the left edge has the dual SIM and SD card tray, which also has the customary rubbering for added resistance of water even though this phone does not have a water resistance certification. Scooting over to the bottom edge is the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, another tiny hole for the primary microphone, a USB-C port for data transfer and also 33 watt fast charging and the loudspeaker. Star of the show, however, is the amazing 6.7 inch OLED 1080p display, which supports a 120 hertz refresh rate. Scrolling on this phone is addictive just from how responsive it is when navigating the UI and also how smooth everything is doing day to day tasks. We will dive into this later in the review, but there is also a 32 megapixel selfie camera with eye tracking autofocus for better portraits. I'll give the exterior design an 8 out of 10. It loses some points on originality, obviously, but ignoring that, it is one expensive looking and feeling smartphone. The Common 18 Premier is running Android 11 and a brand new skin. This is the Hi OS 8.0 and it's got a bunch of goodies baked inside as well as a whole UI refresh. Starting off with the looks, it's cleaner, it's smoother, it's more mature again. The notification curtain got a couple of tweaks. It's been split into two, so swiping down from the left half of the display will show the notifications only. This is messages, app notifications, ongoing downloads and stuff. The right half of the screen launches the shortcut toggles for stuff like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, as well as the brightness and volume slider. An interesting one is the gear features in each mode. In the notification shade, the gear icon will send you to the notification settings where you can customize which apps show notifications on the shade, as well as the notification badges on app icons and banner notifications. The gear in the toggles curtain will send you to the device settings which we are all used to. It's some impressive attention to detail. The only nitpick I have is that the animation for both these features moves in the opposite direction to the gesture. You swipe down to open the curtain and the actual animation animation pops up from the bottom which is not very aesthetically pleasing. This time the UI supports an always on display and Techno went absolutely all out on the selection of AOD animations. There are static ones like this one which just shows your digital and analog clocks, artsy looking geometric ones and frames for those that want custom images. Then there are dynamic ones as well. The elapsed ones change depending on the time of day with four different animation styles for that time of day except for the man in the cave one which only has two styles, day and night. The other dynamic ones are nature, which are not related to the time of day but actually move whenever the AOD is summoned by locking the display or when the display timeout is initiated. And I have to say they really put some effort into the quality of these animations because they are smooth and pretty detailed. Oh, and the AOD will turn itself off if the phone is completely still for 10 seconds. As soon as you pick it up, the AOD turns on and you can see the date, the time, some notifications like missed calls. Etc. 120 Hz refresh rate is very noticeable, especially with me being used to a 60 Hz refresh rate phone, and just usage in general feels better. It's smoother, it's snappier. In the settings, you can choose between 60 Hz and 120 Hz mode, as well as auto switch, which essentially leaves the display at 60 Hz when nothing is moving, and then 120 Hz when the motion is present on the display, mostly when scrolling stuff. 
As expected, the battery will move a bit quicker with the refresh rate at full tilt, but that's something to think about before permanently pinning it at 120Hz. Under the hood is a MediaTek Helio G96 CPU which brings a 120Hz refresh rate to Techno on an OLED display. This particular one I have with me has 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage which is pretty generous for some very smooth performance. The hardware is quite capable, I was throwing everything at it and it didn't care. Light gaming, heavy gaming, multitasking, video recording, it was always on the ball every time. Even the reaction time when navigating the UI felt more responsive than my Huawei P30 Pro. In fact, it felt quite similar to the POVA 2 I reviewed with its 180Hz touch sampling rate. It's an awesome experience. On the battery side of things, the Camon 18 Premier takes the similar approach to the Phantom X. It's got a 4750mAh battery supporting 33W flash charge and this time I tested the charging because I had the whole box with the 33W brick in it and dear lord it is rapid. Here are the headline stats, 0-24% to battery in 10 minutes, 0-66% to battery in 30 minutes, 0-100% to in 57 minutes. It takes literally less than an hour to get a dead Camon 18 Premier to 100% battery. And for those thinking if this is safe for the battery, this charging system has been tested and certified by an independent testing organization which gave it the green light. It's not going to explode or melt whilst charging that rapidly. But what about battery life? The Camon 18 Premier lost 40% of juice after an hour each of gaming, video recording and video streaming. It's not the 30% that the Phantom X with a similar battery managed to pull off, but this is also a reflection of the price to pay for that ultra smooth butter 120 refresh rate. Also this test was done with the refresh rate set to auto which is the mode a lot of users will have it in. If you want to you can pin it to 120Hz all the time which will go through the battery even faster or you can be a complete maniac and pin it to 60Hz for the battery life. You'll still be a maniac. The 120Hz is dialed down to 60Hz if the battery gets to 10% to try and extend the battery life just a little bit but with normal usage it's a 2 day phone unless you are going to be using the camera extensively. This is the most exciting techno camera setup since the Phantom X probably the most versatile as well. We have an 8 megapixel telephoto camera with 5 times optical zoom via a periscope lens, a $350 smartphone with a periscope lens. The wide angle camera is 12 megapixel unit and the main one is a 64 megapixel unit. Now off the bat I like how Techno arranged the settings of the camera features because they are a lot. So essentially the bottom row is your camera modes and these will be automatically arranged based on the ones you use frequently. Pretty convenient. The top row will have the settings available for the selected camera mode which as you can see change with the changing camera modes. And this is a big screen, so for easier one-handed use you can swipe the top row down closer to where your thumb can reach without too much hand gymnastics. I personally feel it should go slightly lower, closer to the area with the bottom row of buttons because there is still some hand gymnastics going on, but I love that it's there. Then swiping from the bottom up will open the full list of camera modes available which include slow-mo, time-lapse, super moon amongst others. So fine, the camera settings are well organized but how is the actual camera? <laughs> Photos look great, they are truly impressive, the dynamic range in broad daylight is strong and keeps everything well exposed. In AI mode the main camera spits out 16 megapixel images which if you do the math is a 4 to 1 pixel binning ratio so each pixel in the final image is a collection of data from 4 pixels of the 64 megapixel camera. Okay, in English this helps make the images look a lot better. <laughs> the processing however is adding a lot of saturation to the colors. They look uh, very alive, quite nice and vibrant which some might prefer but I think it should have been toned down just a little bit towards a slightly more natural look but this is just my preference. If you want to use the full main camera resolution you can switch to Ultra HD and make some high res photos but I recommend that you only use this mode in good lighting for the best possible result. Video. 
Techno solved the biggest flaw it had on videos which was stabilization. They're calling it a gimbal stabilized camera but this is by no means an actual gimbal hardware that's on the lenses but rather some really good electronic image stabilization that almost feels like the phone has been placed on an actual gimbal. None of that mumbo jumbo actually matters though because the results are what we are looking for. It's very smooth. It's smooth enough to actually be a good vlogging smartphone and even for the creative ones, it will take some very good cinematic style video. It is very stable. In fact, there is a car review in which some of the shots that are going to be in there are actually from the Techno Camon 18 Premier. Stay subscribed to TechZoom to watch that. The only complaint I had is that the autofocus takes quite a bit longer to lock on to focus in this ultra steady mode and also the footage is a lot softer with ultra steady on than when it is off. It's not perfect but almost good enough for me to say it's perfect. In fact, if I were to give an award for a feature, I would say the ultra steady gets the award for the most improved feature on a techno. This for me feels like the most important Tecno smartphone. I mean, if you look at the Phantom X, it's a Halo device that Tecno used to show how capable they are at making a flagship grade smartphone. A mighty feat considering the competition on that end of the playground. But with the Camon 18 Premier, it's just a straight shot at the Wild West that is the premium mid-range market. It's bringing some of the features that are super rare in this segment, a quality 5x optical periscope zoom lens a 120Hz OLED display, a premium design, build quality and materials and all this for just around 350 bucks in Zimbabwe. Tecno has made the best value smartphone for 2021 with the Camon 18 Premier. It's a lot of good bits crafted into a very good price. It's the second Tecno phone I have ever wanted to buy since the 10 core Phantom 6 Plus. If you need a smartphone that delivers all-round performance on a sub-$500 budget, just buy this one. Buy it now.